Here's one that people struggle with. How to deal with family that's not saved. When you become born again, you will find that your zeal to learn and share the gospel will be on a high. But then you run into a few troubles along the way because people reject what you want to share or they just don't want to hear you at all. And then it really starts to stir up your emotions, especially when it's your family and your loved ones that switch off at the sound of your voice. But... Let your heart not be troubled, because Jesus said these things will occur. Matthew chapter 10 verse 34 to 39 says this, Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And then you might be wondering, why does it seem like Jesus is causing such division? Well, it's quite simple really. Free will. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 says this, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. You've got to understand that when you become born again, your mind is set on living after the things that pertain to the gospel. Whereas the other option is to choose the things of the flesh, which is the lust of the world. And as much as you might want your family to be saved, it's not in your hands to give them salvation. But what he has given you is the opportunity to be the light, to bear fruit, ultimately be an example. But you've got to keep in mind that there will be resistance. And they're going to look more at who you were rather than who you're becoming. Because you think about it, the same thing happened to Jesus. Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58 says, And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there, and coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many works there because of the unbelief. Now I'm not saying that they can't be saved, but the reality is some will take longer to come to the faith than others. But here's the faithfulness of Jesus. After he sent the disciples out to preach, he then went into their hometowns to preach. Matthew chapter 11 verse 1 says, When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. First and foremost, your faithfulness needs to be in your relationship with Jesus. But we need to keep in mind that bearing fruit at all times is crucial to what they see. And if they see that your character and your behavior hasn't changed, how then do you expect change from them? Be blessed.